Gentlemen, we sit here eight games in, we're in 13th place with 11 points. What's been your assessment of the season so far? Um, well, I think the most important thing after the good start, um, I, I, I felt there might be a run sometimes that uh, is uh, not the results we want as a club. And uh, it was very interesting to sort of hear the reaction and see the reaction. And uh, whilst understanding opinions of fans, and I was listening to the Reds Bar chat this morning about what the club have been through over the years as to why they sometimes are not always on board. Um, you look at it that we stuck out a game against a very good side, we showed good spirit um, and we, we got a great result with exactly what I said to Stevens about putting your foot in and, and having that tempo. And I think that turned the game for us, you know, whilst we brought in Cabby, everyone played very well, Glenn Morris played very well. That effort to stay in the game and get at them as much as they got at us was fantastic. You mentioned you brought in the likes of Glenn and Cabby on Saturday. Mm. Um, I think we've seen already so far this season that you have options to rotate, don't you, in different selection, not headaches necessarily, but different options in different positions across the pitch. Yeah, I think I think I will be getting headaches because I want headaches, I want good players. Um, but I actually think, if I'm honest, looking back at myself uh, bringing in so many players since last year and expecting it to work, I was probably, I wouldn't say I was naive, I was hopeful. Um, and then you do realise that the, the performances can go up and down and you've got to make decisions. But I'm, I'm generally very pleased that as a, as a team we look like we've got a way of playing at Crawley. And I know that some people have sort of said, oh, two up front. And, that, and, and, and my explanation is that if we pass it through the thirds, um, we've got a 10 that should, should support and the white men have to rotate and come in. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. But I think we had a format on Saturday that under pressure we still played some very good high-tempo football with also defending what I'd call not suicidal. You know, And I think we had to eradicate that very quickly out of our game. Um, and I think that's the progress for us. I was going to ask you what the most pleasing aspects of the season so far have been for you. You mentioned quite a lot there the style of play. Would you say that has been one of the most pleasing things for you? Well, no, I, I, I'd say the way we want, I, I think the feedback of the fans, I know that, that, that everyone was disappointed with uh, the three on, three defeats on the trot, but the actual people could say, well, we can see we've signed and we can see we're trying to play football. And there was opinions about how we were playing. It wasn't critical. I think it was that we were trying a different way. And I think that's pleasing because as a coach, I have to say how this is my philosophy that I want to put a stamp on the club whilst also adjusting that I'm not a development coach, I'm a Division 2 coach at Crawley trying to get three points for everybody. So I've had to analyse myself very quickly. I've been pleased with that sort of process that I've gone through on my own development. Fans will be aware that this is your first senior management role. How, how have you found it? Is it everything you expected? Are there some bits that you, you didn't quite foresee? Or? No, it's everything I expected and more, if I'm honest. it's it's I really enjoy working with the group of staff I've got, I, with yourselves, the media, um, the fans, the forum, I enjoy the accountability and I love getting the three points or the good result. It's euphoric for the week. We live week to week or we live game to game. You feel the, the, the pain of the defeats, but you've got to... It's nice for me because I just it drives you on to succeed and every day you wake up with a situation to deal with and I've got to lead. Sometimes I delegate uh, a lot with Matt Gray and I deal with Kelly a lot and I, I find that running into the club very um, exciting. What did you find out about the boys during the, the run of three league defeats, Donna? I found that they never wavered. I found that they never wavered in terms of little whispers or situations or team selections and there was disappointments when I left players out um, but the training ethic never dropped and that was important because we train the way we play um, and we don't make any excuses. We, we're, we also looked at the goals and the players accepted, look, we got on the DVD and we showed them why. And I think when you can tell a player some reason why the goal went went, went in, um, and it's not like just you're a naughty boy blame, it's for the future, this is how we're learning, this can't happen again. And then Lewis Young puts a cross in when you're telling Lewis Young in training to get it into James Collins. And I know James Collins is a box player and we get a goal and you see their celebration. Then when you see Enzio celebrate with Carol and all the fans, I thought, wow, I love that. This was a great buzz for me on Saturday and I, and I was really pleased that we all stuck together uh, as a group of not, not only players and staff, but admin staff, everyone around here is uh, 
pushing for us to do well. I, I, I like that movement. I like that coming together of people. You mentioned James Collins scored on Saturday. He's got three headers now, and but it's not just his goals, is it? He works really hard. You mentioned you play one up front, and some of the running he puts in at times to close down the offensive position. Yeah, he's not supposed to run everywhere like that. Trust me, he's supposed to show a centre half one way, and then it goes into the wide man and the fullback press. Sometimes they haven't been pressing, and James will carry on running, and I'm like, oh, whilst well, so I admire you, I've got to get that a little bit of other people have got to do that. Um, but he never goes out of the game, and when we signed him. I, you know, I'd been told about him, uh, and then when I met him, I thought this guy is a winner, and it's just he's a great trainer. He, he you know, he's, he's he turns up eight and nine out of ten every day, and he'll play for you, and he'll get in positions, and he'll, you you won't find him going out of the game no matter how tough the opponent. And I think that mentality resonates through. We've got a leader up front. You know, I think we're getting very good now at the centre half position, and I think Jimmy has had a, a period where. I had a chat with Jimmy about don't run around all over the place. You know, you're a great heart of a lion, but you've got to have the brains. And he, he showed that on Saturday for me, Jimmy, and I want to get good players around him. You know, so I'm really pleased with that side of the team. His selection for captain was Jimmy. How impressed have you been with him so far mm. this year? Well, very good. You know, I, I, why did I get make him captain was the, the situation that I thought here was a guy that, as a strength conditioner in the summer, to try and look after himself, works his socks off. Um, cares about the club. Um, when I offered him his contract, uh, it wasn't the length of contract that he wanted, um, but I said, if you're doing well, I will sit and talk with you this time as we speak, and I, I intend to do that. And he cared, and I thought, you know, I thought this guy cares about the club, and he's 29, he's that age where we can push him on, give him the responsibility uh, to actually lead off the pitch, and I have to say I'm very pleased with that selection.